Hello and welcome to all of you. You're watching Tech24. Coming up in the show. Should we be worried about the CIA's cyber hacks? And how did the spying agency manage to get into our cell phones? Dan and Jay Cattlecar will be on set to tell you everything you need to know about Vault 7, the code name for the 9,000 secret documents WikiLeaks has just made public. And we'll test the key able key by the French startup PK Paris their latest connected object, a flash drive to boost your iPhone and iPad. But first, Uber has announced it will no longer use Grayball, a secret software it developed and used to avoid officials it suspected of conducting sting operations on drivers. So how did the program work? Shirley Sitbon has the story. When you thought 2017 couldn't get any worse for Uber, it just did. According to a New York Times report, the company intentionally dodged the rules of towns that banned its services. Uber allegedly used a secret program called Grayball, a software that allowed them to identify which users may have been trying to prove the company was operating illegally. One technique involved drawing a digital perimeter dubbed geofence around government offices on a digital map. The company would then watch which users would frequently open and close the app. As evidence, the person was associated to city agencies, a process nicknamed eyeballing. Credit card information to find direct links to institutions like a police credit union were also used. Based on the data collected, Uber then served up a fake version of the app with ghost cars to those tagged or grayballed as city officials. According to the article, it's been going on for a while. Back in 2014, Portland city officials tried to catch Uber in the act. But uh, yeah, there were two, there were two drivers that, uh, that were available at one point in time and they both canceled on me. Grayball was reportedly approved by the company's legal team. Uber says it's a way for them to stop consumers from using its service improperly. This comes at a time of intense negative media coverage for Uber. At the top of the list, claims by a former female engineer that the HR department ignored multiple instances of sexual harassment and discrimination. Chief Executive Travis Kalanick was also caught on video arguing with an Uber driver about business decisions it's taken in a move that's resulted in drivers' pay declining. I have guys working on lots. And time to welcome our very own Dan and Jay Cattle Car. Hello and welcome, Dan. Hello, Julia. WikiLeaks is also in the news right now uh, because of its latest revelations, Vault 7. It essentially tells us that the CIA managed to hack into our smartphones. Uh, what's, you know, the significance of this latest data dump? Well, the sheer number, these 8,761 documents they are said to represent one of the biggest leaks of confidential documents that describe uh, different techniques used by the CIA to break into different electronic devices like phones and surprisingly smart television sets as well. Now this dates back uh, to a period between 2013 and 2016. And now let's talk about those smart TVs. How uh, precisely, how did the CIA manage to, to hack these TVs? Well, this goes back to 2014, the documents uh, detail work in which these, some of these smart TVs are made by Samsung, they were, or they could be turned into stealthy listening devices. Now, the way, uh, the, way the references are made in these documents is that uh, there's a so-called fake off mode in which uh, that disables LEDs of these TVs, which make it appear to have, you know, powered down the TV, but in essentially, essentially they still continue to have the audio input. So that's how they turned these TVs into listening devices. And there are other mentions of tools, like for example, uh, exploits uh, on both iOS and Android that could give uh, remote access to hackers and, uh, and essentially compromise these, uh, these targeted phones. Thank you, Dan and Jay Kalkar. In the near future, CCTV will not only film us and detect dangerous behavior, but it will also be able to identify each and every one of us in real time. 
It's made possible thanks to phenomenal advances in facial recognition technology, as Alex Hurst explains. It might sound like something out of George Orwell's 1984, with Big Brother watching your every move. But with advances in facial recognition software, it could be a reality sooner than you think. In the past few months, Eurostar, the high-speed train that connects Paris and London, has been testing such software at security screenings. The technology is advancing at a rapid pace and becoming more effective. Like this software created by a French company for the FBI, which is adept at recognizing faces even when they aren't completely turned towards the camera. The program is also able to tell when someone has changed their appearance. For example, you might think that these are two different people. That would be a mistake. The system is sure that this is the same person. And when we look more closely, here, I'll select the eye section and move it over to the left. We see that what happened is that the eyes were changed with plastic surgery and the nose was modified ever so slightly. Humans would be totally confused, but the algorithm is only wrong fewer than one in every 120,000 times. Even more efficient software can track a subject like this man as he passes from one camera to another. You see that at 12.32 he was over there on camera two. And then he shows up again on camera one. And you can follow as he goes. The benefit is that we gain time. The implications go well beyond saving time during investigations. The software could potentially be used in real time. For example, to scan crowds as they wait to enter sports stadiums. For the moment, problems remain. With poor video quality, the system can make errors. And to identify a suspect, that person has to already exist in a database somewhere. Plus, widespread use would raise questions about civil liberties and the ability for ordinary people to go where they please anonymously. And now, Dan, all this data is presumably used to increase our security. As we saw in the report, police officers use it to identify suspects, but now they're also using it to predict crime. Uh, we're talking about the new and promising field of predictive policing. What's that all about? Well, there's a software called PredPol, which essentially predicts uh, the type of crime, the time of crime, and the location. So it's very useful in a sense that it pinpoints a location of 500 feet by 500 feet. And once you know these locations, you can send, uh, I don't know, more backups to those areas. So the emphasis is on preventing crime, so which, which I think is very, very important. Uh, and this is done by using uh, an algorithm. So this algorithm uses data from the last uh, 10 years of all, all the crime data, where the crime has taken place, what kind of crime it has been. And it analyzes that data, and then it makes these predictions. Now, so it goes through an algorithm. Yeah, exactly. It's an algorithm. Now, the question would be that: uh, What if new crime takes place elsewhere, not in these right. areas mentioned Where in the last ten data. years? Exactly. So these crimes are recorded, and every six months, the software undergoes, undergoes what is called a relearning process, something similar to machine learning. And then, using the new data and the old data, it makes new predictions. Now, this uh, model is somewhat uh, similar to what uh, scientists use to predict earthquake aftershocks. So it's a proven model for earthquake aftershocks, and you find a similar use here. Thank you, Dan. We're going to move on now to Test24. With this portable device, you will never be short of storage to take a picture or a video on your iPhone. And I'm sure that's happened to you and to all our viewers, Dan and Jay. Tell us more about this device. Well, it's a very useful device, especially when you are traveling. Uh, normally, this is meant for old iPhones whose memory, like this, my, my iPhone, iPhone 5, it has a memory of around 16 GB. It's not exactly 16 GB, slightly lower than that. And just Which using- Which is interesting for a tech person. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, using all normal apps, I haven't uploaded anything, uh, any heavy files on it, but still I only have 770 MB of memory left which is not enough. So now this could be a useful tool because uh, there are three different models in this. It consists of, it has a storage, it is a storage uh, device essentially. So this is a 16 GB one, there is 32 and 64. 
So all you need to do is plug in uh, into the lightning port of your iPhone and you have a you have an extra extra st storage. So this is done through the app. Uh, so as you can see here, there are different options. You can, there's video, photo, music, etc. So what it does is, first of all, you can free your phone of all the clutter or clutter, I say, because there's so much that you don't go through, but still you want to store them. Right. So you can keep all those photos and videos on this drive. And you can keep it with you. And it's you can portable. keep it with you. So if your phone breaks or if it's stolen, you have a remit backup. And secondly, if you want to play uh, heavy files like movies, or if you want to play audio, which you cannot do it by storing them on your phone, you can transfer those files into this drive from your computer, and then you plug it in, and you can play on the iPhone without, put, you know, without uh, having to have more memory on the phone itself. So it's a very useful device. At the same time, it also is a, is a charging port, so you can just connect it to your computer. It's really again. small. You can have it in your purse and exactly. have it with you all the time. Exactly. Thank you so much, Dan. Well, that brings us to the end of this edition of Tech 24. We hope you enjoyed it, and do stay with us here on France 24.